This video continues our discussion of the play framework using Scala. We are working on our web version 2.0 uh, approach to doing our task list. And we saw in the last video how we could overcome one of the problems that we have, which is we have these hard coded URLs, the, the routes uh, that are currently hard coded in our JavaScript. We showed that we could use reverse routing if we did a twirl template to generate our JavaScript that's not the the approach that I really like to do uh, mainly because we're mixing JavaScript and Scala in the same code so while I'm going to keep that code around I am not going to do things that way we want to look at a different way of doing this so the thing is we really just need to have other ways of getting the information into this JavaScript possibly without generating this through a twirl template well we already have a file that is being generated by twirl here and so what I could do is I just need to have that information generated here and use it in the JavaScript. And one way to do this is to make a hidden input. So type hidden. Often these are used in forms, as the name implies. They don't show up anywhere. Now, of course, they're not really secure. Uh, so I'll make an ID of a login route, and I want to give it a value. The reason they're not secure is because the user can always go look at the source code and see these things. So you don't want to put like sensitive information inside of here. Uh, they're just hidden in the sense that they don't show up on the screen, but they are things by giving them an ID that I can get hold of in the JavaScript fairly easily. So I want this to have our routing. So I'm going to have here my at rats routes task list to of login. So that will basically be the route for this, which should be slash login to, which is exactly what we want. And that will go inside of our HTML file. And then inside of our JavaScript, we can make a variable we'll call it login route and grab the value from that ID that we just created. And then instead of going to this hard coded slash login to, I can go to the login route. Okay, let's see how many typos I have in that. We refresh this, hmm, that seems to be happy. What does the source code look like? Well, note that in the source code here, uh, I have my input type and its value is slash login to. So what happens if we try to log in? It works. Okay, so this is happy. And once again, the real reason that we like this is if I had mistyped this, so instead of calling this login, I called it loggy, something like that, I get a compile error. Okay? We like compile errors. Compile errors tell us that the things are going wrong early on, uh, whereas errors in our JavaScript um, can take a very long time to, to find if we, if we mistype all types of things inside of here. The Scala type stuff gets checked much earlier and generally tells us when we've messed something up. Now, this is not the only route. I would like to do the same thing with these other routes. So, okay, well, let's, let's start writing some code for that. Input type equals hidden. We'll give an ID of a validate route and its value will be routes dot task list two dot I believe it's just validate. Sure, sounds good. Okay, I left out the ampersand or the sorry the at and here. Okay. Let's refresh on that. Oh 
not enough arguments to method validate. Hmm, what's going on there? Well, if you look at routes, validate is going to a method that takes a username and a password. But those, that username and password aren't known until the client is actually typing stuff in on the client side. Okay, this, this is user input. So the twirl template can't fill those in. We need those later. Okay, we ran into the same problem with this being generated uh, by the script. And this is a slightly harder problem to, to deal with. I don't have that information at this point. Now, one way of dealing with this would be to put something in here. Uh, so, yeah, A, B, actually, how about I do A, 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 B, B, eh. and then I could programmatically deal with that inside of the JavaScript. So this no longer has a compile error, and when I look at the source code for this, sure enough, the username will be AA and the password will be BBB, and I could theoretically go into my JavaScript and replace, so I could find that route. We could make another route here, a validate route that takes our ID of validate route. And then I could do something where I replace things. So yeah, there's, I could take some JavaScript and, and replace stuff so that instead of having, <laughs> let me go ahead and do that, because that's not how I'm going to do this. I could go in and I could replace the AAA with username and replace BBB with password. And if I had things in there that were unique enough that never pop up in routes, uh, hopefully that feels ugly to you, just like it feels ugly to me. That's not how I want to do things. I don't want to be doing string parsing for modifying URLs. Okay, so how are we going to deal with this instead? Well, the answer that I'm going to use is I'm not going to use a load. So one of the things is that the load is doing a get request. Okay? And that was nice and simple for us here in that we could have all of these things be uh, gets. But remember, this was also a security flaw. Okay? The fact that, that our login uh, or that validating the user, creating a user, deleting tasks, adding, all of those things were, were get requests, especially the, the validate and create because they include password information in them. Okay, we really don't like that to be part of our URL because you can't encrypt the, the URL. But even delete and add, these should not be get requests. Okay? These should really be post requests. If we were doing this properly, uh, all four of those routes would change from, from gets to post. Okay? And that, that opens a whole nother issue where we have that the CSRF. We can do this in jQuery. Uh, we can make it so that instead of doing a load, we want to make, I'm going to have this do a call to post, or we could do a full Ajax call. Basically, we have to change the way that we're doing things significantly. Uh, but once we do that, remember the post requests don't take arguments. They are going to be URL form encoded, and we will pull things out of the body. So that's going to take a fair bit of time for us to write. So we'll come back in the next video and we will change at least some of these routes to post. We'll start doing this work to, to improve this so we're doing it the right way. And that will allow us to put in our reverse routing appropriately and to, to deal better with security than what we've done up until this point.